When the Prime Minister's hand fell on Madhurand Hagen, he screamed. Oh! Dad! I'm dead! Don't touch me! My legs! Go! Go! Anirudha stopped lifting him and asked, Prince! What has happened to you? What has happened to your feet? He asked worriedly. My legs are broken, I can neither walk nor stand. The First Minister looked back and said, I. Bring the palanquin here. He ordered his men. Then, sir. How did this accident happen? Why are they lying alone in the rain? Where are the retinues that came with them? How dare they leave themselves like this? Whatever punishment is given to them is not enough. Said. Prime Minister. Don't punish anyone. No one is guilty. In the evening I got on my horse and left alone. I was going along the river bank. Suddenly it started raining. A big lightning flashed and thundered. The horse spooked and ran. I got caught in the branch of this tree and fell down. The horse has gone somewhere. I don't know if his leg was broken or sprained by the speed of the fall. He couldn't even stand up. It's a good thing you're here now. Anuradhar said, something was done by your father, the great Kandaradatha Devar, and this is the only thing that made me come here. Grit your teeth and wait. I will put you on the palanquin. I will find out all the other details after going to Ada Yen's house in Nathan Temple, said Anuradhar. When the palanquin was brought near and lowered, the first minister gently held the prince and lifted him into the palanquin. He ordered the men to raise the palanquin and move slowly and slowly. He also kept walking near the palak. They arrived at Sundara Chola Vinakaram which was given as Nathan Temple for some time. Near that Urparimal temple there was a house of Prime Minister Anuradhar. By then they carried Prince Madhurand Hagar and laid him on the bed there. When he asked to bring the lamp, he saw that the leg was not broken but only sprained. The prince's panic cleared up a bit. Both of them drank the offerings from the Purimal temple. Then the first minister said, Prince, sleep peacefully for the night. When the day dawns, they can do whatever they want. I am going to Tanjore. If you will come with me, I will take you safely. Said, Sir, you have done me so much harm. You have made up for it today. I will never forget the help you have done me today. I will always be grateful for it. Perhaps if I sit on the throne of this Chola Empire, I will make you the first minister. Said Madhurand Hagen. Anuradha pretended to be drowned in the sea of miracles and said, Prince. I am obliged to the Chola clan. It is my duty to advise and help all the members of this clan. Therefore, you do not need to thank me personally. But you say that I have done them some harm. I do not understand that I have done them any harm out of remorse. I don't remember. If you're a little big-hearted and let it be known, you can make atonement for it. Said. Sir Anuradha. It is known to the world that you are a great villain, a scholar, and a diplomat. But do not show me your wickedness. Do not think that I do not know how terrible the harm you have done to me. But for the help you have done me today, I will forget all that. My thanks to you. Tell me how you can make it known. Tell me if there's anything I can do to replicate it. Anuradha smiled and understood, Yes, Prince. There is a way for you to show your gratitude. You have a boon that this old man has to ask for. Don't go alone on a horse like this. Travel in a chariot surrounded by retinues before and behind. It is better to travel in Palak, times are bad. People are upset because of many reasons. You have seen today in Old Palace. So it is better to travel in a closed Palak rather than in an open Palak. If Palyavar is the Palak of the youngest queen, it will be very special. No one will doubt it. Said. Madhurand Hagen was taken aback. A sign of fear appeared again on his face. After managing to wait a little, he said, Prime Minister. What did you say? What is the meaning of asking me to travel in the closed palak of Palavur Ila Irani? Is it your intention to humiliate me? 
Prince. I do not know that you consider it a disgrace to travel in the palanquin of the Queen of Palyavur. Since when did you have this idea? Was it the custom of yours to go that way often before? You must have come to this good decision after returning to the house of the Sambuvarayar of Kadampur at last. Madhurandhagan was further horrified. A look of panic spread across his face. Prime Minister. To Kadampur House I, I. He began to say something with a stutter. Prince. You went to the palace of Kadampur on the 18th day of the month of ADI, with the chief minister, didn't you? That's what I'm telling you. Then you went to the palace of the younger queen and returned. I didn't like that very much. The journey to the palace is suitable for old people like me. Young people like you travel on elephants or horses. It is best to do it. But they need proper training for the journey on horseback. I will make the necessary arrangements for them when they are fit. Dear Anuradha. Be careful. You are saying more and more insulting words to me. Today you have decided that I don't know how to mount a horse because of this accident. You always say that I am going in Palaver Rani's closed palak because I once went in a palak. Remembering your kindness and the help you have given me today. I waited. Prince. Their patience makes me very happy. Poruthar Bhumi Alvar is an old saying. What does the great poet of Tamil Nadu say? The earth endures those who dig it. Just put up with it. It also provides fresh water to the diggers. Those who want to rule the earth should also have this quality of the earth. Even if an old man like me says something rude, those who want to rule the earth should tolerate it. Sir. What are you saying? Are you accusing me of wanting to rule this Chola empire? Madhurandhagan asked. His lips trembled, eyebrows are raised. There were signs that fear was turning to anger and rage. They can claim their rights publicly. They can make their wishes known to the emperor himself. Instead, there is no need to go ashore alone in the darkness of the new moon to seek the support of the wretched Kalamaka crowd. Or there is no need to congregate like a band of thieves on Artha Ratri in the Sambuvarayar mansion and talk about conspiracies. Consider that those who suggest such ideas to themselves are their arch enemies. Madhurandhakan was very confused. His astonishment was beyond measure when he thought that the Prime Minister knew so many things. At the same time panic on one side and anger due to panic on the other side were increasing. Sir, how do you know all this? What traitor is pretending to be friends with me and telling them? He asked. It is no use for you to try to find out. I have eyes. I have ears all over this vast kingdom. Nothing can happen in this country without my knowledge. So the emperor knows all this? Madhurandhagan asked. No, he does not know, that many secrets which my eyes and ears tell me are buried in my bosom. They do not come out unless it is necessary and urgent. Yes, yes, there are so many terrible secrets buried in their bosoms. If only they came out, wouldn't this Chola empire tremble? Said Madhurandhagan. His voice now had a tone of hypocrisy and deceit that it had never seen before. The first Mantri noticed it and said as if he didn't care, Emperor is my best friend. But there are secrets in my heart that he doesn't know. Sundara Chola is on the verge of a fatal illness. His heart is already hurt due to many reasons. I don't want to hurt his heart further by telling him about the conspiracy of the petty kings. It is necessary. It did not occur. Prince. You may believe that I will never tell the emperor about their affairs. Sir. Dear Anirida. What is the reason why you suddenly feel so fond of this demon Madhurandhagan? Madhurandhagan laughed scornfully. Prince. I did not suddenly develop an admiration for them. Like the sons of Sundara Chola, I have always admired them. There was no occasion to show it before. I got a scare today. I fell off my horse and broke my leg. But a few days ago, you would have strangled me under that tree. Narayana, Narayana. What word is this, Prince? Sir. Don't think I don't know anything. 
Don't think I'm innocent enough to believe anything. You started plotting against me when I was still in my mother's womb. You arranged to kill me when I was born on this earth. Lo, I see a sign of surprise on your face. Dot you wonder how I knew all that, don't you? Don't think you're the only one who knows so many terrible secrets in this Chola country. Anuruddha's face now presented a truly miraculous sight. A semblance of it appeared and disappeared momentarily. At last, with a regretful smile, the first minister said, Yes, Prince. It is true that I was so worried. It has become a problem today. How did you survive when it was arranged to perform Chisuhadi as soon as you were born? If you tell that secret too, I will be a Christian. Said. Prime Minister. Why are you sitting still like this? Are all these things untrue at once? The Prime Minister was literally sitting there stunned. Prince. What is the use of pretending that I am not, when they know so many details? Said. Yes, it's no use. I know the reason why you suddenly took pity on me. You don't like Adita Kari Kalan. You wanted to put Aromas Hivarman on the throne of the Chola country. Now you're taking pity on me because you sent him away. But I'll tell you one thing. I'm going to forget all the harm you've done to me before. Today you I will also thank you for your help. If you say that you are in my party from today, I would like to have you as the Prime Minister when I ascend the throne. Said Madhurandhagen. Prince. Their words make me cringe. Said Anbal Anridap Brahmarire.